Hey everyone, people keep asking what cameras I use, so here you go, I'm gonna show you. This is just my collection of still camera photographies. My video camera is, oh, that's a whole nother subject, and my audio equipment and my lights, those are all separate videos. But today, I'm gonna to show you what still cameras and lenses I have. Um, I'm a photography nut, obviously, and I try out everything that comes out there, and I just, I, I don't wanna miss anything. And what I like, I keep, and what I don't like, I give away. So uh, let me show you, I'm gonna give some of this stuff away, but I'm gonna show you what I have right now. So this is my, this is today's collection. I have, for full frame cameras, it's mainly all Sony. I love Sony, I'm just in love with them. It's the smallest, most, they have more features than anything. They're the first ones to come out with the full frame cameras. I even got the original original A7. It still takes amazing shots. Here are some taken with a basic A7 and this German Voigtlander 40mm 1.2. It's manual, but it has a nice like kind of 3D effect. So that's the original A7. This is the one that started it all. It's a wonderful camera. I don't want to get rid of it. It's like a Model T. I want to keep it. I have a couple of A7-2s, uh, an A7-R2. The pictures look the same between all these models. And of course, an A, what is this? This is an A7-S2, I got a couple of those. And I have an A7-3 somewhere. I don't know where, somewhere here. Anyway, I'm gonna show you my full frame lenses in a minute and what kind of pictures they can take. Um, and the full, other yeah, full frame, of course, is the RX1-R2 from Sony, which is a supposed to be a, I guess you take it on a trip with you because it's, uh, it's small, it's supposed to be compact, full frame, but the 35 millimeter lens is attached to the camera and the thing doesn't flip up all the way. It does have a, a viewfinder, just like a, like a, a real camera should have. But being full frame, it obviously takes great high quality pictures. And because it's not so big, a lot of people use it as their only camera when they go on trips. But it's heavy, it's really, really heavy. It's got an audio input, which is great. Um, but it does overheat after a few minutes of videoing, which is not cool because I go to places that are always hot. But it takes good quality images. But really what I'm really most excited about is my APS-C cameras. These are smaller sensor size than the full frame, but the quality is almost just as good. Look at these pictures. These were all taken with mainly the 6300. It's a smaller camera, so it's easier to take around. I have the original 5100, which look how tiny that thing is. This is as small as a pocket camera. I mean, it's as small as a pocket camera, and you can change the lenses on it. Look at that, look at that little thing. Here's a picture I took with the 5100 using my Rokinon 50mm 1.2. Also, because it's so small, it makes a great vlogging camera because it has a flip-up screen. Almost all the functions are on the, on the touch screen because it doesn't have room for buttons and knobs. But it's a great little camera to have. So then the next step up was my 6300, which is this one, which I love. If, if I go out and want to do something a little more professional with flashes and outdoor flash something, I use the 6300. This is with the Sigma 56 1.4, which I think is the best combination of anything. And the new 64 just came out, which has the all revered flip up screen. Um, and it has super fast eye tracking for auto focusing and things like that. My favorite APS-C lenses are the Sony 50 millimeter 1.8. It's lightweight, really small, really sharp, and it has super fast autofocus. The second small lightweight lens I always take around is the Sigma 30 millimeter 1.4. Small, lightweight, and it still has blurry backgrounds. Then there's the Rokinon 50 millimeter 1.2, but it's heavy and it's manual focus, unfortunately, but it takes good pictures. And the Camland 50 millimeter 1.1, because it's 1.1, has super blurry backgrounds, but it's manual. But the 63, 64, 6500, they all have digital eyepieces, so you can see what you're doing quite easily with manual lenses. But the best of all is the new Sigma 56 1.4. It's small, great depth of field, and good autofocus. And it's not even that expensive. It's just the best APS-C lens for any of the Sonys. So that's my, my APS-C camera line. Then I have my, I'm falling in love more and more with the Panasonics and the Lumixes. This is an even smaller sensor. This is the micro four third sensor size. And uh, <laughs> what's really funny is I, you know, I get the ones that everybody says to get the big, you know, I got the GH5, which is like the big, that's what everybody has to get because it's the big powerful thing. I, I used it maybe five minutes. It's just too big and it's too heavy and it's too clunky. I'm gonna give this to my friend over at Camera Conspiracies. It's a very entertaining channel. I think he would appreciate this more than I would. I still like this one. I still like the, um, 
what's this? The J, the G X8. You know the reason I like this one? Because the eyepiece goes like that. And you can look at it through it like this. I love how the eyepiece, I don't know why more cameras don't do this. This is so, and of course it has the flip screen which goes all the way around and you can do this and that. So it's got that and this. Which I just think is the coolest thing of all. It's a nice size. It's a little, it's about the same size as a, a little bit bigger, a tiny bit bigger than an A7. Um, but this is a great camera. It's got the flip out screen and paired with a 42.5. This is like a thousand dollar lens, the 1.2. This is an amazing combination. You really blurry backgrounds with good depth of field. I love this camera. It's been out for a long time. It's probably less expensive now than it was when it came out. I have a G, this is a G7. I just, you know why I got this one? Because I like the color and it's lightweight. This is a really lightweight camera. They all have a micro four thirds sensor. So the packaging is, this is a G7. Uh, it has the flip out screen, really lightweight. Cool camera to play with. It's kind of like a toy for me. It's like a lightweight plastic thing. It doesn't have audio inputs, but it's just fun to play with. But really my most favorite one of all of the, of the, uh, oh, and I have this one, which is a, GF2, it's a portable little compact camera. I talked about this in my smallest cameras with blurry background video. You can put any lens on there, micro four thirds. As a matter of fact, you could take, if you wanted, you could take one of these lenses, big giant ones, and put it on these little cameras, which is overkill because now what's the use of having a little camera? Because you've got a big lens, so it's not portable anymore, it's not small. But uh, you can put a flash on here, which is cool. I, my whole goal is to find the smallest cameras possible that um, I can take with me that don't take up a lot of space or weight. But my most favorite of all the small Micro Four Thirds pocket cameras is this one. Look at this. This is like, this is like a little tiny kid's tourist toy camera. You can take this thing off. Look how small that is. You just put it on around your... your uh, your shoulder and walk around with this like a tourist that doesn't have a lot of money. This thing is the most amazing little tiny camera. It has a flip up screen, so you can do selfies. This lens, Olympus 45 millimeter 1.8 M Zoico lens. When you look at the pictures, it, it's almost exactly the same quality as this big thousand dollar lens, um, the 42.5 1.2. This thing is amazing. Uh, it takes blurry background pictures and it's just, and it's autofocus, super fast autofocus. This camera is amazing. It's got its own built in flash in it, which I guess is okay. I never use it, but this is just the coolest camera. I mean, it's lightweight, it's small. I've got three of them. One, two, three. I just love it. I love it. Um, this one has a 25 millimeter. This is a great small lens. Even though it's 25, it still takes nice blurry backgrounds. I have three of these, the 45 millimeter 1.8. Uh, and I talk about this again in my smallest cameras with blurry background video. If you want to learn more about it, I'm going to make a special video just about this one because I like it so much. The only two lenses I ever really use for my little micro four thirds cameras is this Olympus 45 and the 25. Um, this is just a, a toy to play with. It's, it's a Chinese camera. It's a Yi 4K camera uh, <laughs> that is this in the lens, $279. It takes 1080p, 60 frame video, uh, depth of field, blurry backgrounds, but it's really weird. I mean, it's really a, a hassle to try to get good pictures with. It can take good pictures, but you really got to work it. Then I got my Canon stuff. Um, I have full frame Canon lenses over here. I'll get to that in a minute. But this is, I, like I said, I'm try, I've, I gave away all my big Canons. The only one I have left is my little tiny smaller compact camera. It's the M100. It's an EOS M series. I don't even use the big lenses with the Canons anymore. I use it for my, my Sonys and things. I'll get to that in a minute. These are my smaller lenses for the smaller camera. The, the M series lenses. Rokinon. Um, which I don't think is as good for the Canon. It's, I suggest for little cameras like this that don't have a viewfinder that you'll have to do the LC, never use a manual lens, use autofocus because it's just a real hassle to get perfect focus with cameras that don't have viewfinders. Um, Camlan, which this is a great lens to stick on here. Camlan, this is a 1.1, 50 millimeter. These two are really good. The Opti these are small, these are cheap little camera uh, uh, lenses. Um, 50 millimeter F2 Optica. And this is a generic brand. I don't even know what brand this is, but it's an it's an f one point eight, um, and they're like a hundred bucks or something like that. 
This is a good one, 22 millimeter F2 by Canon, but the best EFM lens by far is the Canon 32 millimeter 1.4. It's small, lightweight, good autofocus, and it still has decent background blur and depth of field. The Canon APS-C sensor is smaller than the Sony APS-C. Maybe that's why I like the Sony pictures more. They're just sharper and better looking, but it's still a good little fun camera to have. Just play around with. The only thing I don't like about this camera is it doesn't have a viewfinder. So these are my EFM lenses. That's it, it's the EFM lens. But for the EF lenses, I have the big old, uh, what is this? This is the uh, 85 1.2 and my 35 1.4 and I got the 50. Wait, this one should be here and that one should be there. So 85, 50, 35 and then I have a Sigma 30 1.4. Um, so I don't use these on Canons. I use them on my video cameras actually, which over here, these, these are actually full frame Sony mount, E mount and then I have an adapter on here. These are great lenses. They're super heavy, and I sometimes I use them on my um, my A7s also. This is a Metabones adapter. It's an E mount to EF, an EF to E mount. Canon lenses are great for depth of field, and you know they're just good quality lenses. But they're they're heavy as bricks, so I don't really use them very much, other than if it's sitting on a tripod or on a video camera or something like that. But they're really good lenses, even if if you're putting them on non-Canon cameras. But right now my arm's getting tired just holding this thing. Uh, so I, again, these are mainly just for, for my video cameras. Sigmas are becoming my favorite for third party lenses. Sigma and Sony is actually a really good combination. Then there's the Sony lenses for the full frame Sonys. Uh, these are not in any order. This is a 35 1.4. This is a great lens if you're outdoors with beautiful landscapes or big skies and you just want to capture the vastness of a large area. 35 is about as wide as I need to go. It's good enough for most of the wide angle stuff that I do. It's big and heavy, but when I go to beautiful places, if I can afford to take it along, I do. Um, this one I use a lot. It's a Zeiss Battis 85 1.8. The moment I looked through this lens, I was hooked. I don't even know words to describe the feelings when using this lens. It's actually pretty small. It's very lightweight. This is the perfect pairing, Sony full frame with the Zeiss 85 1.8, especially for portraits. It has just the right amount of compression and background blur. It's very lightweight, super sharp, focuses super fast. And if you want to do portraits on location and you don't want to have the heaviest lenses, but you want to have something that's good for portraits and just working fast, it's autofocus. You don't have to think it's, it does all the thinking for you. This is a great lens to have. If there was only two lenses I would ever have on full frame, it would be this one and maybe the 55 1.8, which is a Sony 55. These are the two lenses that I would say if you're only gonna have two lenses for your full frame cameras, for sure. And both have nice blurry backgrounds. Both have a really nice uh, bokeh, bokeh, um, bokeh of flowers. This little 55 1.8 is probably the most important, versatile, all-purpose lens that I have. Sony did a really good job making a lens that's really small, really lightweight, autofocus is super fast, and it still has a blurry background for this little tiny lens. I never go anywhere without this lens. If I only have one lens, this would be the lens to have. And I really like the picture quality. Sony did a really great job. All right, the big heavy monster, the 105. 105 1.4 Sigma. This thing is, it's, 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 it weighs a ton, it's big, it's heavy, and uh, I, but the pictures it takes is just amazing. Just amazing. I mean, because it's big and heavy, it's not that much fun to work with, but wow, the pictures you get when using it, it's the after result that is fun, not the experience of using it. Uh, the Sigma 135 1.8, this is a longer lens, so you have to be further back. This is what I used to use before I got this one. You really got to step back with this thing to get, uh, you know, to do portraits and things, but it's a great lens. This is a good lens to have, and um, I, I, I like it. It's big, it's heavy, um, but again, I'm trying to go lightweight on stuff. And then there's the Sony 51.4. This takes a little bit blurrier backgrounds than this thing does. It weighs a lot more, it costs more, 
and you really can't tell much of a difference between this and this. So I always end up using this instead of this. The, the 51.8 is still my choice over the 51.4, even though there is a slightly more blurrier background bokeh. Yes, it does take good pictures. It is definitely a great lens. It's just so big and heavy. This one, I, I hardly ever use this one. Okay, what's this one? This is the uh, 16 to 35 2.8. This is if I have to use wider lenses. I use this a lot on my, uh, my uh, what do you call it? When a camera's on my gimbal handheld steady cam thing, my Ronin, whatever it is. So that, when I walk around with that, this is a good lens to use because you can adjust it for you know, making it wider or, or a little less wide. And it still has a blurry background. So it, it's a pretty good lens to use for when you're, you know, moving around a lot. This is, or doing kitchen videos or something like that. This one is really lightweight. It's a 25 F2 Battis. Um, I hardly ever use this one. I don't use wide angles that much. I don't know why. I, I, I do, do more portrait stuff. This thing weighs a ton. This weighs more than three other lenses put together. This is a manual lens. It's a Miticon Zhongi. It's a Chinese lens. 0.95. Look at that. F.95. This lens can have the... Bl this, this has blurrier backgrounds than any other lens I have, but it, it's manual focus. It's full frame. Um, weighs a ton. Not something you want to carry around all day. But it's fun to play with if you have one, and I don't think they're that expensive. Um, and then I've got all my little uh, more compact cameras here. I got a couple of um, R100s. I have a Panasonic, what is that, LX10. <clears throat> and then I have a couple of uh, uh, RX0s. The, these are, I'm going to make a video about this. Camera the size of an ice cube, one inch sensor. It's, it's better than a GoPro in so many ways. I'm going to make a video about that. So I'm not going to talk too much about those. But those are, if you're doing like a video, like the ones where I'm in the car talking, you just have nothing more than literally a pocket to put it in. But you got it, you want to, and they're good for selfies too. And for all kinds of, you can hide them in bookshelves. And I mean, it's a million uses for those things. You can put them on your bicycle. Then I have a couple of these. These are novelty phones. These are actually pretty expensive. They're still, they still cost a lot. It's a Samsung NX Mini. A flip up screen, great selfie uh, camera. I'm going to make a video about this also. I'm not going to talk too much about each one. I'm just showing you what I have here in this video so you can see what I kind of work with. This is kind of uh, the, the run of what I use. Uh, on a, I like just going back and forth. I, and, oh, and of course I got this one, the big, what is the 70 to 200? I never use this thing. This is, this is like old school stuff. It's a great telephoto. If you really want to get a super telephoto effect, it's big, it's heavy. You can get a similar effect using an 85 or 100. I don't really use this thing that much. It, it's, it's kind of a display case thing. Look at my big lens. Aren't you impressed? So this is, these are the cameras I use. Uh, I just play around with them. I'm getting more and more into the APS-C micro four thirds thing. The, the full frame is great and I use it for the professional stuff when the things are serious and I, you know, and, and I really want to make sure I get the very, very best. And the micro four thirds stuff is just so much fun to play with. I think the fun factor goes to the, the micro four thirds. It's just the most fun uh, sized camera and type of camera to play with. The most practical is the APS-C, like the 63, 64, 5100. And then when you get serious, I go with the full frame stuff. The full frame stuff, I don't use that often unless I'm doing like a really expensive photo shoot. Like I'm on, you know, I'm, I, I'm in Tahiti or something, on Hawaii on a volcano or something. Then I use the full frames, but for everything else, I mean, going around town, just having fun photo shoots, it's all APS-C and micro four thirds for me. I mean, I'm not into having like the biggest, most impressive equipment with giant motor drives hanging off the bottom and all this stuff. Even though I have a lot of gear, I'm all about, <laughs> believe it or not, downsizing, getting smaller. But I want to try everything before I figure out what I like and then I get rid of everything else. I mean, I mean, look at all this. This is, 
this is what I do. I experiment, I try. Look at all my stuff here and look, look at all my video cameras here. This is, I'm gonna get into the video camera stuff later too, but you can see this is my hobby. This is my world. I like to experiment and see what's out there, try it all, and then share it with you guys, whatever I find out. So I'm like your experimenting guy. And whatever I don't like, I just give it away. I don't even bother selling it on eBay or returning it. I just wanna share the joy because I want other people to enjoy photography too. I love photography and I think if you do good for the world and help put it out there that the world takes care of you. So I hope you guys, uh, a lot of you, some of you enjoy photography as much as I do because that's why I created this channel. So I can share my experiences, my reviews, and I give stuff away and I give you tips and tricks that I find work on a practical level for a guy that travels a lot and goes around town a lot and, you know, oh, I forget what this thing is. This is a, uh, what is this? This is a, I haven't even used this thing yet. This is a, it's, it's a, what do you call it? It's got a little gimbal on it so you can walk around and do selfies. I, I haven't even activated it. Um, it's a DJI something, Zen Muse. So you can, oh, there's, I gotta, I gotta figure out how to use this thing. Anyway, all kinds of stuff out there. Um, so stay tuned, just answering questions as to what cameras I use. These are just my still cameras. I'll get into the video stuff a little later, but I also wanna get into my audio stuff, my microphones that I use, hidden uh, lavalier mics, overhead mics, shotgun mics, all that stuff. Recording equipment, you can see there's some record equipment that I use for what I use to record my uh, wireless stuff. I have so much wireless stuff, it's, it's ridiculous. So I'm gonna show you over time, all the stuff that I use, but that I find are the best ones for me and I'll give away the rest. So I'm rambling now. So anyway, uh, I thought I'd just share this. This is, these are the cameras I use and stay tuned and I'll see you in the next video. Send your friends to Marcus Picks, M-A-R-K-U-S-P-I-X. Subscribe, stay tuned, and I'll see you in the next video.